And let's turn to the response from the top office following the historic deal. President Park Geun-hye was relentless in calling for this matter to be settled within this year. According to Song Jae-sun, a meaningful plan, a meaningful phone call rather from Japan helped reverse the unpleasantness of Tokyo's continued attempts to downplay the issue. The presidential office called Monday settlement a final closure on the sensitive, decades-old issue. But President Park Geun-hye stressed that it's valid only if Tokyo sincerely fulfills its pledges. Japan's wartime sexual slavery is one of the thorniest issues that has prevented summit talks between the leaders of the two countries for more than three years. But the bilateral summit that took place on the sidelines of trilateral talks between Korea, Japan and China last month paved the way for a fast resolution with President Park calling for the issue to be settled before this year ends. After sitting down with Japan's Foreign Minister Humio Kishida at Tawade Monday afternoon, President Park also spoke with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe on the phone. During their 13-minute conversation, Abe expressed apology and regret to wartime sex slavery victims, adding that Tokyo will sincerely fulfill its tasks to restore their dignity and honor and heal their physical and emotional scars. Abe's verbal apology is a significant step forward from his previous statements, which downplay the issue on moral or humanitarian grounds. In her message to nation, President Buck asked the public to view the outcome from a broad perspective, as Seoul did its best under the given circumstances with time ticking for the victims. President Buck said this landmark agreement marks a new beginning for Korea and Japan's bilateral relations and that the two leaders will work towards improving the relation through building mutual trust. She also pledged that such tragedy will not repeat in the future. Song Ji-sun, Arirang News.